How do you do? Um, okay, I'm back for the last video of this series. Um, it's a number system and how to use it in worship uh, and how to use it as a development tool. Um, and just a summary really of the reasons why I did this video. Uh, felt quite inspired. Uh, we'd had a, a local church conference recently um, and was able to sort of be part of a worship team with uh, a well well known worship leader uh, that was a great experience for me as an individual um, and he operated the number system um, unfortunately it was it's something that I was familiar with so I had an opportunity to play with this individual um, but it sort of highlighted to me that you know we've we've all got things that we can share and and give to other people tools and knowledge um, and it's never just for ourselves you know I think that's part of kingdom building um, is that we allow uh, God to use us um, as we expand to then pass on to other people to give them the opportunity to develop and expand as well so so that was a big sort of inspiration behind this video um, and not taking for granted that actually there is you know, a lot of people don't use this system. Um, and like I said in the previous videos, it's been really helpful for me as an individual. So hopefully, you know, even if there's one person that's found it helpful by watching these three videos, then, you know, that's it's been worth doing. For anyone that's um, wondering, yes, that is Jesus on there. Um, it's <laughs> made from leather. I got it from Egypt many years ago. So uh, there you go, just in case. He was thinking, does, is that Jesus? It is. Not literally, but, you know, it's a, an image of him. So, the last step of this, so you, hopefully now you've got a, a bit of an insight into how the major scale works and how uh, we generate the numbers for the corresponding chords within the key that you're playing. That should, if you keep going over that, you'll get it. Um, just take time, just repetition, repetition. I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned about learning music and how to play an instrument is just you just have to keep repeating stuff and it, it just eventually drops in. Um, the second video, hopefully that was an inspiration in terms of thinking about progressions rather than chord sequences and even that little task of just playing um, the same chords and thinking of how many songs you can think of um, within you know that progression that's being played and then moving that to a completely different key as well um i find that really useful when i'm i'm preparing songs where am i going to go with this and like i said you have to consider your vocal range or your teen's vocal range the tempo of it but as i said previously if you're leading then you can take control and ownership for um that full direction as long as that's communicated well then it should work okay um so the last step really is uh, the challenge of now taking that um, knowledge that you have and then progressing that into different keys. So we've just used a key of G so far. And as I showed you in the previous video uh, with the song, it doesn't matter in terms of once you have the progression in your head uh, and you begin to hear it as well, then if someone changes key, you if you now practice this uh, principle in different keys then you be able to transfer um, to that song pretty easy and this is always useful when someone just starts a song in prayer meeting or even in church service that wasn't planned uh, and sometimes you have to find the key but if you know that song you know the song but you just don't know it in the key that they've um, raised it in uh, but here's where the numbers come in because you think okay I always remember that the verse is just one, four and five, and then the chorus is just one, six, four and five. So it doesn't matter as long as you know the chords within the key that you're playing. Okay, so I think for guitarists, the common um, keys that we use are G, um, you've got C, uh, you've got D, F probably for some people, and E. So 
So the best place to start is to get that major scale in your head. So let's do it in the key of C. So you've got C as your one chord, D as your two, E as your three, four as your F, five as your G, A is your six, seven is a B, but it's actually a G B, and then you're back to C again. And this is your scale. So we've got C, one, D minor, two. It would be all right if I played the, uh, I don't usually play it like that. D minor is your two. E minus your three, four is your F, five is your G, six A minor, seven. Remember the seven is always the five chord with the seven bass. So in this case, I'm playing a G with a B, and then back to C again. So again, principle works the same in terms of numbers. One, four and five are always major. One is C, four is F, five is G. Bit of La Bamba there. We won't go there. Um, okay, so, and then the other chords, two, three and six are always minor. Um, again, easy way to remember it. So if you apply that again to every other key that you're doing, so let's do it in the key of E. So I won't go for all of them. I think the application is now for yourself to go away. Um, what is also useful, just to, as a little mini step there, is understanding the notes in terms of how music, you know, music scales in general. So we have... Uh, Think of it in an alphabet, we've got the key of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then A again. Each of those have a sharp or a flat, so you've got A, then you go A sharp, and then your B. B and D don't have sharps, so you go straight to C. C sharp, D, D sharp, E, no sharps there, so you're back to F. And then F sharp, G, G sharp, A. Same principle applies no matter what you start. So you've got D, you've got D sharp, E. Remember there's no sharps there on E, so you go straight to F. F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. No flats, back to C, and you just keep going round. So that, again, is a, just a useful um, thing to learn in terms of music theory because it allows you to make that transition so if we have the best thing to do now would be to get a metronome and to play the corresponding chords you could just google all the chords in in the key of e if, if you're not sure how to work it out so if we were in e i know e is the one i know two is f sharp minor uh, three is g sharp minor four is a Five is B major, six is C sharp minor, seven is, remember, the five, which is the B with a seven bass. In this case, it's a D sharp. And then we're back to E again. So if you get a metronome now, and just practice two or three keys initially. Just, just pick a key that you're familiar with, that you're used to playing in. And instead of saying the chords, say the numbers. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Get a metronome, practice in a tempo, pick a completely different key. Or again, maybe break it down. Just just try your one, four, five in every key. So you've got E, I'm in E, so E is one, four is A, and five is B. I might just practice them. And you'll hear songs as you do this. You 
came from heaven to earth to fall in one and the one to the four and five and four and one the four to the five and the six to the two and the five to the one four and five and four so again, it doesn't matter what key you do that. It just it doesn't matter what key. Once you learn this principle, you start thinking in terms of numbers. So that's my final tip, really. Apply all those things, learn, um, you know, pick two or three of your common uh, keys that you're playing or you do your songs in at church. It'd be very rare that you'll do songs in any flats or sharps. So um, at my old church, we used to do a couple of songs in like C sharp and B flat. But, you know, I've been around a lot of churches involved in worshipping. It's very rare that you would do that um, in my experience so look at c maybe look at d e f and g i think if you start with those um or whatever comes comfortable to you try those as a principle practice uh but also do eventually get to your sharp so even if you're in f sharp here i know my four is a, a b and my five is a c sharp and my six is a, um, a D flat minor or uh, sorry a D sharp minor or E flat minor and then we go on my two's there my three's there my four's there my five's there I'm doing that simply because I know pattern it is. I'm just following a pattern in my head based on the number system. Um, it's as simple and as difficult as that really. So I'll leave that with you. I really do hope that's been useful. Um, for any of you who are local and know me and want to go through this in, in sort of in small groups or one-to-ones, um, just give me a shout. You've got my details um, but for those that are completely listening online somewhere please let me know that this has been helpful for you um, fire away with any questions god bless and yeah let me know how you go thank you